What's going on Repair Gang? I got a video today for you for anyone who has a single cylinder lawnmower. It doesn't have to be this carburetor in particular, but if it has a single cylinder and the carburetor is in this orientation, this video is going to show you how to remove that carburetor and how to take it off, clean it up. And it doesn't matter if it's this style or the other style. As long as it's in this left hand side like this, it's going to be relatively the same video. So enjoy this video and hopefully it helps you. Just like all repairs, we are going to start off by opening it up, taking off the air filter, and getting ready to remove the shroud. For this style carburetor, I really recommend you remove the shroud. Have no fear, removing the shroud is easy. Especially on this lawnmower, it's just four 10 millimeter bolts. One, two in the back, two in the front. It's pretty simple to do. All you just got to do is get in there and do it. Now with this lawnmower in particular, they're not slotted, so you have to remove the bolts all the way. But your lawnmower, you might just have to loosen them up a little bit. And look at that gas too. That needs replaced. We'll do that in the future video. Now that you got all four bolts out, you got one more little screw. It's a driver size or it's a, most of the time it's going to be a flathead. It's right here. It just holds on the shroud to the carburetor intake. So once you remove that, you should just be able to pry up on the lawnmower shroud and it should just come right off. This one was a little bit of pain. You might want to remove your oil filter dipstick too. Now that we have access to the carburetor, we can take the rest of it off. I'm just going to show you some stuff in here. We got the intake manifold, which is two 10 millimeter bolts. And then on the carburetor where the air filter goes into it, those are going to be two 12 millimeter bolts. Because this does not have a pet cock, we are going to have to clamp the fuel line to stop gas from leaking all over the place. But it shouldn't be a problem at all. Okay, here I got the fuel line all clamped off. And now I'm going to remove it. Just using a pair of needle nose pliers here just to remove the fuel line. And then we're going to go ahead and take the intake off the carburetor. Now that's going to be two 11 millimeter bolts. You got a few more hoses that you just have to disconnect. It's pretty simple. But then once you remove those two 11 millimeter bolts where you're going to see me removing them right now, there's going to be their studs are in there with eight millimeters. You got to get in there with an eight millimeter wrench or an eight millimeter socket. I prefer a deep socket because a short socket might not get there. But it's pretty self-explanatory. You just remove those. And then from there, we're going to remove the intake. Now it's time to remove the rest of the carburetor from the machine. And it's pretty simple. Like I said, all you need is those two 10 millimeter bolts to remove the rest of the carburetor from the intake where the cylinder is. Now, once you do that, you got to remove your throttle linkage and your choke linkage. And you also got to remove the wire from your on off fuel solenoid on the bottom of your carburetor. Sometimes it has a clip, sometimes it don't, sometimes it's easy to get in, sometimes it's not. But as you see in this little part here, I really struggle with it. And sometimes it's just the way it is. Sometimes they're a pain in the back end to get out. But without, without too much trouble, we do get it out. We do get the carburetor off. And we are going to get this thing cleaned up and ready to go. Now, removing the linkage is pretty easy. Just make sure you're being careful. The, the choke lever linkage is pretty easy. You just unscrew it and then pull it out of the little slot. Now, the one you got to be careful for is removing the throttle linkage. As you see here, it has a little plastic piece. It's kind of tight in there. So make sure you remove it without breaking it. And there you go. Now it's time for dismantling the carburetor. There's my 8 millimeter. We're going to take it. We're going to remove these two studs out of here. And then once I get everything separated and apart, before I actually remove the bowl of the carburetor and the solenoid and stuff, I'm going to spray off all the dirt and debris and grime from the outside of the carburetor just to stop debris and stuff from coming back in once I get it all said and done. Do your best here to try not to break any gaskets. I broke a gasket actually when I removed the bowl, which I replaced later. I have extra on standby, but just try your best 
to be a little more careful. Don't break any of the gaskets. You want to make sure that it's all good to go right back on without having to order parts or using your part storage. Just be thorough, and once you get the thing looking brand new, nice and clean, and you cleaned out every orifice, took off the bowl, took off all the holes, you can put it back together. Once it's all back together, putting it back on is pretty self-explanatory. You're just going to do everything in reverse. I like to put the intake on, make sure all the gaskets are in place. You want to always put... Now, here's where I mess up. I forgot to put the choke on, and now put the choke on now make sure you put the choke on now i didn't do it in this i end up getting it on there but it would have saved me a lot of pain and trouble putting it on right now so make sure before you tighten down these two 10 millimeter bolts here that i am doing right now you put that choke lever on because you don't want to be in the situation i was where you're worried about bending something or breaking something but yeah Instead of just taking it apart and admitting that I made a mistake, I just forced it in later. But without further ado, all you got to do is put these two 10 millimeter bolts on after you got your throttle and your choke linkage on. And then you're going to put back on your air fold intake to go into the carburetor. And you always want to remove your clamps to make sure you're not leaking any fuel, which I'm going to do right now. Make sure that, you know, everything's sealed. Make sure that new gasket I put in there because I broke the other one is working. Make sure I had the solenoid screwed in all the way. And just make sure that you got everything up to snuff before you 100% tighten down. Now see here, I, this is where I noticed that that choke lever is not on. But yeah. It should be a pretty self-explanatory procedure, just put it all back on in reverse, and after that, I think we should test fire it, make sure this thing runs. Yeah, watch this, watch this. This is no fun, this is no fun. I'm thinking about it afterwards, now that I'm editing it and put it on and doing the voiceover, I had a hard time here. And you could see me too, I'm just like, I'm struggling, I'm struggling here. It's so funny though. Yes, I can't stress it enough. Do not do what I just did because if you broke it or bent it, that's a pain to replace that carburetor. I mean, you can do it. It's pretty cheap for an aftermarket one. But why even bother with it when <laughs> you just do it right? And that's why I'm telling you, before you tighten on the intake, put your linkages on. And then after this is all said and done, I put off the shroud off camera. It's pretty self-explanatory. Again, the four 10 millimeter bolts. And then from there, we're good to go for the test run. So I'm going to take it back to past Andrew when he was doing the repair and let him finish this video up for you. Okay, ladies and gentlemen, moment of truth. We're going to start this thing, see if it runs after our repair we did. Now it hasn't been sitting a long time, so the battery is dead. So we're going to put our jump box on there. And we're going to give it a start. We're going to put the parking brake in. Choke it.